Here we are with my Pontiac Solstice Roadster, which we've shown you before in several videos. It's a really nice car to have, really fun, makes a great sports car. But like any car, it has some flaws. And we're about to show you another failure that you'll have with one of these cars eventually. Particularly if you're in a place like Arizona or in the great southwest where it's really warm and really dry. Here's what happens to the outside door handle after a while. So the outside door handle has completely failed. And what we're going to do in this video is we're going to show you how to replace the outside door handle on a Pontiac Solstice or Saturn Sky. It's going to be the exact same job. And if you've noticed on the channel, we've done the interior door handles before. This video is about fixing the exterior door handle. Right here you can see that it has been repaired before by one method, which yes you can do this, which is use a pour-in plastic, but even that's not going to be a permanent solution. The only permanent solution, and we'll show you why with a good one, the one we're going to put on, the only permanent solution is actually to replace the part. Here we have a replacement part that's come in from GM Parts Giant. They're online. They are really easy to use. They help you get the parts that you need. It means nothing to us if you use them or use somebody else, but that's where we actually got the handle. I've obviously already opened my box. This is pretty much how it came, except it was in a little plastic bag that I've removed. And this shows you the handle as it comes, and you'll notice it's got a plastic wrapper on it. So in the video, you might think, oh, this is bad. No, that's just a plastic wrapper to protect it while we're installing it. But when you look at the back, we'll have the camera come over here. You'll see what it's supposed to look like. They have two points here where screws are going to go in. These points are what fails eventually. It's a plastic door handle. You're constantly pulling on it. And contrary to what people tell you that plastic lasts 500 years, it's going to break within a number of years. This is a 2007. The door handle has been repaired once in this car we can already see. And that repair using a liquid plastic didn't last permanently. So we're going to put in another one of these. But you can kind of see that it, had they actually filled up this area with more plastic, it would probably last longer. But all they've done is make it so it'll last long enough until somebody's probably going to get rid of the car. And therefore they save some money on not using plastic, etc. That's really what they've done. But this is the way to replace it. You're going to have to get one of these. And you'll notice your whole door handle is pretty much plastic. It's, it's what they've made it out of instead of metal like they used to make things out of. But we're going to show you how to change it out now. All right, you notice we've got the top down on the Roadster here. It makes it easier to deal with working on the door anyway. And of course, we already know the door handle doesn't work. So I'll reach inside and we'll open the door with the inside door handle. Step one, remove your Phillips screw from the end of your door. You only have one here to do, so I'm just going to do it by hand. It isn't worth grabbing something for just doing one screw. And I like to set the parts in the car so that I don't lose them. Inside the area behind your interior door handle, you have a little panel with a tab, and you've got to pop the tab out, and then you've got to get your little plastic piece to come out of here. The reason we're going to do that is now we have another fastener that we've got to take out right behind that point. Down here you have another panel. This particular panel needs to come out. I'm going to grab an old plastic spreader for body filler and I'm going to insert it in there and pop this panel for you. All right, we have the old plastic body filler spreader and we're going to push out like that. And you notice that way I don't damage either part. So that's why we're going to remove it in that manner. Again, I'll set the part in the car so it's easy for me to find it. Behind the lower panel, there is one bolt right where my finger is pointing to now. There is also one bolt down here where I'm pointing to now. Those two bolts have to be removed. They're seven millimeter. So we've got seven millimeter on our little ratchet and we'll take those out. That 
try hard not to drop them into your door when you're doing it. Especially if you've been in here before. Because you're more likely to have things undone in such a way that something can actually drop in the door. I think it gets to a certain point and I usually get tired of the ratchet and we'll just unscrew it. These are fairly long screws, just for reference. Okay, we've got one. And you notice it has a little washer with it and I put my finger behind the washer so it wouldn't fall. And we'll take the other one out above here. Same operation, we're going to remove it. It's good and loose. There we go. So we've got those two out. We've got our one out on the back. And we've got a screw up here on the top now to remove. And now we're going to remove our upper screw right here. It's a Phillips also. And again, I'm going to try to catch it with my finger here and hopefully not drop it anywhere. So I have to retrieve it. Come on. There. It's out. So now you got your fasteners off your inner door panel. And the inner door panel obviously has to be off so we can get to the actual exterior door handle mounting. So we're going to pull off the door panel. And all the way around there are snap-on fasteners. And you just have to pop it loose. Okay, so now we have the door panel loose from the door. So it's out of our way. And I'm going to let it hang down. Because ideally, we hopefully don't have to disconnect anything electric to mess with this particular assembly. Inside this oval slot in the door, you're going to find there are two bolts directly across. They bolt your door handle on. In order to get the two bolts out, you're going to need a fairly long extension. This is a little bit longer than I need, but I didn't want to have too many multiple parts in here in case I ran into something and drop it down in the door. You're going to need a 10 millimeter socket. You're going to have to go in here and you're going to have to take out both of these bolts. These go into the two holes on the back of your door handle, as we showed you on the new door handle when we started the video. Now the real trick is, you can drop them in the door real easy. Which we're going to try not to do, but if we do, we've got our magnetic wand that we'll pick them up with. And you notice I'm trying to tip this down a little bit so that when it does come out all the way, hopefully it stays in the socket and doesn't fall in. And kind of the negative, you can kind of peek through this upper hole and see what you're doing, but it's not the best system. And darn thing's loose, but it's not coming out yet. Even though it's totally loose, and I don't want to drop it in the door. So we're going to see what we can do by holding it and getting our magnet. Here I've got the magnet. So I'm going to try to get a hold of this thing without losing it in the door and get it out of here. Right now it just doesn't want to come. Probably because of course our plastic is a little broken because it's 100% loose in there and I'm not yet getting it. So we may have to get creative to get it out of here. But at least the magnet's got it for a moment. Since we have not gotten it so far, I'm going to put the magnet back on this lower one. Since it's not coming out yet. And we're going to try to grab the upper one above it. Both of them are 10 millimeter. Let's see if we can get the other one out first which might help us with the one that's wanting to be totally loose, but actually not come out. This one. Both of them are coming loose. Okay, 
Now, I have the, uh, the offending piece. You notice what's happened. As I said, this was repaired with pour-in plastic, but that doesn't hold. Probably mostly because there's a mold release and it's not going to stick well enough. So that solution really isn't a good solution. That's why we're going to replace the whole handle. Now, I'm going to see what I can do to get the two bolts out. I've actually got a hold of the one bolt with my hand. And I'm going to try to transfer the magnet to it and pull it out. And I got it. So there's one of them. So we got one half of the ordeal of getting the bolts out. And I think I'll set that in the car real quick. Now we've got to succeed with the other one. And the reason we're having troubles is because the plastic is spinning. Because I've actually got a hold of the plastic. If the camera comes around, we'll see what's going on here. This piece of plastic is spinning. So although it feels loose, the bolt's never been out of it completely. So I'm going to try to hold on to the plastic from the outside, turn around my socket and try to get it on it from the inside and twist it out the rest of the way. You see here it comes right off. So that's all was holding it was that. You notice when they made these it was a knurled metal piece that they cast into the plastic but you notice the failure in the original plastic here. That's because the polymer gradually leaches some of the chemicals out into the atmosphere and becomes brittle and dry. That's what's actually happening. So now I've got to get the last one out of here. I'm going to hold on to it again with my fingers and I'm going to come back with my magnet and grab it. And there that one is. Out. So I got both of them out. So the assembly is essentially undone. Here are some junk parts. Set them aside. And now all we've got left is the fact that the handle is fastened right here. And we've got to take this apart because that is actually your latch mechanism. If we don't take that apart, we can't take the handle out. Right up in the other slot in the door, and you can see this one's kind of angled. This is your front bolt is going to be straight across from here. Same 10 millimeter, that's the front bolt of the door handle. So that's got to be removed. Now that we've got the two rear, we've got to remove the front. All right, we've got the same extension set up. Our 10 millimeter socket on the end. We're going to take out the front bolt. And all I got to do is loosen it. And since I don't believe this is broken off in the plastic, hopefully it's going to actually come out for us the easy way this time. Just unscrew it. Let's see if we've got it off. We do. So now I've got a hold of it. You notice I'm going to grab onto it again in just a moment. And I'm going to grab my magnet. And I'm going to pull out the magnet because I have a much better chance of getting it if I can get it with a magnet. There it is with the magnet. It's out. So now we've got all the bolts out. Now we can take our handle off. And all you have to do is sort of wiggle it around the end like that. So now we have the broken handle off. You can see both of the broken mounts that are in here. You saw that the pour-in plastic isn't a good solution because over time it's not going to work. Probably because there's a mold release in here. Plus it's been vacuum chrome plated and it's probably never going to stick well enough unless you really put some good scratches in here and stuff and even then I would say mm, sort of iffy. Up front you can see it's just a plastic piece too but what's interesting is if you look at the two parts and you were to look at the new one there's more meat to the plastic in the front than they did in the back which is kind of strange. Yeah they have two bolts but they have a lot more meat up here in their plastic. We are back with the new handle and I just wanted to note to you you see the supports onto the plastic back here as I said they're very small Look at the sports on the front. So I would call this undersized because this is where you get a failure. I haven't had the fronts fail. I've had more than one of these vehicles, but these do fail. Now we're going to start the process of putting it back. First of all, we've got to thread it back on here. Just thread it around just like I just did, and it's back on. Now it's a matter of carefully working it back into the door. And actually, before I do that, I should note 
You have to get your lock lined up here because you got two holes in that lock and they've got to line up because that's where your bolts are going through. And if you don't have those holes in the metal lined up, you're going to have a world of hurt when you're doing stuff. So work carefully to get the lock and everything together and lined up. Up front, there's a plastic tab here that probably is going to be broken, or you might break it when you take your handle off. It won't be broken on your new one, so you're going to be able to push that in. But again, I'm concerned in the back, really, with getting everything lined up so I can get the holes lined up for the bolts with the lock and the handle. And it's one of those things that, of course, I can't really show you. It's going to be buried inside the door. Just remember, be sure you get your holes all lined up in here. Now it dawned on me, and this is a real tip that can be helpful. It'd be really nice to have the magnet in the socket, wouldn't it? Instead of having to use the magnet on the wand. And I remembered I'd ordered from Amazon for a different purpose. A whole series of these real small neo... I think it's neodymium magnets. These very strong little magnets. It'll fit right down inside of my 10 millimeter socket. So all I gotta do is flip it down in there. Now the socket's magnetic, which means that I can grab a bolt and put it in here and look. So getting yourself one of these magnets or more than one, because in fact I can fit a couple in here and I'm going to fit a couple in here so that it'll really hold on to this, then I won't drop the bolt when I'm trying to find those holes in there. So get yourself with some of these really small magnets. The smallest ones you can get in diameter on Amazon. Uh, they're probably sold somewhere else. I just know I got mine there. I think I paid like six bucks for something like 30 or 40 of these things. But that's the solution instead of, not that the magnetic wand's bad, but look what I can do with this. This is the way to do it. Now you notice that dropped out? It dropped out because I only have one of them in there. And it's actually too far down. So I'll put a Probably two more, probably a three stack. All right. Now, because of the depth of the socket, I needed three of them. But now you see it does not fall off. It's You can shake it like crazy. It's not going to come out. So I needed three of these super small ones. But I'm telling you, it's going to make your life a whole lot better because it's hard enough for you to try to look in there, get that in there, and not drop the bolt. So you're going to need to have yourself a flashlight. There's no way you can watch me actually physically put it in the hole, but that's what I'm going to work for here. And I'm going to be working for doing it in the front hole first. And you got to remember, there might be a slight misalignment when you're arranging this stuff, because the handle can move slightly around on the outside of the body. But you might luck out and get it on one try, too. And it looks like I sure did. I got it in one shot. So you might be just as lucky when you do it. And now I'm going to grab my ratchet and I'm going to fasten that up a little bit more. Now if necessary you can always loosen it if you have troubles getting your back ones in. But I'm going to actually put a little more fastening on this one. And do not over tighten these. Just snug will be good. And unless I pulled that off, there's my magnets still down in there and my part is in the door and I can't drop it this way. All right, so now we're going to go and we're going to do the back two of these. Still using the magnets. Making sure everything's lined up. Now I'm not going to totally tighten that yet because I want both of these started back here. So we got one in, magnet's still in here. We're going to get our other one in also. Okay. tightening the bottom one. Remember, snug them. Don't tighten them too tight. You will actually have problems. You can ruin the parts whenever you're dealing with metal embedded in plastic, so don't over tighten those. So now everybody's back in place. 
on the outside we have a door handle again that previously had broken off so now we've got a door handle on the outside just like before now I can show you the rest of the stuff to put it back together all you got to do is reverse the process for putting your door panel back on exactly like I showed you how to take it apart but this will allow you to replace your door handle on your exterior of your solstice or your Saturn sky and you'll be back to having a properly functioning door handle you're going to be into this roughly I think I'm into it about 70 bucks for the actual part and shipping and tax and you know it takes us longer to do this on the video than it probably takes you in real life provided you have the magnets like I showed you probably going to spend an hour doing this save yourself a whole lot of money and a whole lot of grief and you don't have to go down and have somebody do it for you like and subscribe we'll see you later and cars plus and we're going to have some more things with the solstice and a whole lot of the older cars to show you the future